previously on The Outlaws. My face hangs, plastered on every wall with the crimes of my past. Colt McAllister, criminal, a beast, a monster, the bringer of death. A familiar face spoke to me, one that I know of but have never seen. My grandfather, a notorious outlaw, thought to be dead. He deceives me more than once. I attempt to seek redemption in an unforgiving world, yet I will continue to walk this road on the path of darkness. Elijah is still alive and well. Help me and I promise with my heart that you will see him again. No. What I propose? How do you know that thing? Never put your hands on me again. This will be your only warning. You don't tell me what to do. I want answers. If you wish for an answer, then allow me to speak. Do not get yourself killed now as Elijah's life rests in your hands. Your actions and yours alone will decide his fate. You most definitely possess many questions to the whereabouts of your dear brother, I'm sure. But I ask of you now to listen to the voice of reason and cooperate with me. I'm listening. First, uh, Lieutenant, have you and your men excuses for a brief moment? There will be no hostilities here. Sir, I don't think that would be ideal. That is an order. Aye, sir. Corporal! As you well know, there was a tragic house fire three years prior. Yeah, the one where my family died. Ah, you're catching on. Very good. I'm afraid that before I can say more, we must go for a stroll amongst the beach. A change in scenery may do well. I ain't going anywhere with you. If you wish for that, I suppose it shall be. Wait! It is beautiful, is it not? Get to a point. Patience is a skill best learned, so very well. I had heard of this dreadful news during a delightful meeting with the local sheriff. We had an evening for tea and the topic came to mind. Upon inspection, it was declared the fire was no accident, that no bodies were found. What happened? It was believed that a local bounty hunter had come to collect your father and deliver justice. Mr. Clark was to be imprisoned and promptly executed in the town of Chuparosa the next morn, but it appeared as, upon confrontation, a fight occurred and the house caught fire. Elijah was nowhere to be found. Wait, he escaped? For the time being, yes, I believe he did. Elijah ran into the night as the inferno danced in the sky behind him. Your brother would walk for days, though starving, desperate. He marched on in hopes to find you, but alas, a young boy can get lost in the heart of this emerging, vast world. I... I came back for him. I did. Our... Our house, I... I looked for days. Your efforts may not have been in vain if the brigands, bandits and murderers failed to find him first. You lie! These despisable men are no fire in the heart for a lost, starving boy who is brought in with the false promise of a saving grace only to be bound and chained for the next two years of his life. Where... where is he? 
What have you done with him? Elijah was captured by a group of... Hmm, perhaps I shan't. You tell me right now! I wish to spare you the details, but alas, upon the ending of the Confederacy, there were those who wished to keep their ways in secret. Elijah was one of their unfortunate victims. No. A lost boy with no family to come looking for him. Frail and weak to the bones. An easy prey for forced labor. I was taken by the story when in a recent visit I came across Elijah. So much so that I spared no expense in ensuring his safety from these bandits. A hefty price to pay for a young man's freedom. Please, I need to see him. I need to make sure he's okay. In due time, my boy. In due time. He is in good care under my protection, and I ensure you that when Colt McAllister is taken into custody and the streets are once again safe, that you and your brother will walk free from this life of crime and death. Is that a promise? Yes. Yes, it is. Now come. We have much to do and lots to see. This is amazing. The city is a lot bigger than I thought. Welcome to the pinnacle of civilization, my dear boy. Saint Denis, the jewel of the Western Front. These houses, man. Do people live in them? Indeed they do. What do they even do with all that room? You may one day find out for yourself. To the tailor, good sir. The tailor? Indeed. An establishment selling the finest clothing and garments. I know what a tailor is. Why are we going there? My esteemed friend at De Cusset is going to suit you. Suit me? Indeed. We are attending a very special occasion this evening. I must see to my most distinguished guest wares, yes? You want to dress me up? Naturally. That is correct. If you think I'm gonna wear some fancy suit, then you're crazy, man. I dare say that look is quite stunning on you. What say you, Lieutenant? Yes, very good, sir. Yes, yes. And now we must act on that barbarous hairstyle. To the salon. A dazzling hairstyle to impress the ladies. What do you think, Mr. Vesquelles? I hate it. Now, do not be too harsh on yourself. The barber did a wonderful job, and I'm positive you shall earn quite a few hints tonight. When we hurry this up, it's almost opening, and our great governor can't be late. Oh dear, indeed. We must be swift. Quick, make haste. It seems if we have arrived. How'd you fare? Uh, the suit kind of itches me. And who the hell decided to make a seat in the middle of a swamp anyway? I'm sure there will be refreshments aplenty. Let us proceed inside. Names? Let us in. We're on the damn list. No, no, Sergeant. Governor Elcott, and the two accompanying me are my colleagues, Lieutenant Wyatt Hill and Mr. O'Neill. I do believe we are on the list and quite expected for the attendance of this event. Governor of Lemoyne. Okay. What about the kid? The kid? Oh, Mr. Vesquellas here is an only guest of mine. I do hope this show will cause no further problems. I suppose Mr. McRae won't mind. Before you can enter, though, you're gonna need any weapons and firearms in your possession. Is he kidding? I ain't handing over my iron. He's not kidding. I commit him with your weapons, Sergeant. 
This is your first time? Indeed. I would like to discuss an advantageous opportunity with Mr. McRae. I will inform Mr. McCrae of your arrival here. In the meantime, feel free to enjoy the various festivities and amenities. Hey, I'm off to the bar. Holler if y'all need me. What? Right behind you, sir. Enjoy yourself, Wyatt. Maybe the last moment you have in a while. Relax and delight yourself in the well-heeled joys of entertainment. Have fun. Uh, I don't really know what to... Do you prefer the joyous rings of acoustic melody? Or perhaps you fancy yourself a swig of vintage wine to invigorate your night? Uh... The clientele here seems the sociable type. Good-natured and well-versed, perhaps you may immerse yourself in a pleasant conversation. Or maybe strike a match with someone new. Not really. There are, of course, many table games here. A dangerous fixation for those craving adventure, but... Alas, I'm not one to judge others based on their own pastimes. I mean, I was pretty good at it. I think. Like, I survived from that, so... Ah, so you have a straight poker face. Very good. Just continue to the tables. I don't have any money though, so I don't know. It is quite alright. I will endure the cost. Do not worry. And another win for me. Thank you very much. Hey kid, you're gonna stare at us like the circus clown or are you gonna bet in? Make up your mind. Yeah, uh, sure, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll buy in. Didn't take you as the betting type, nor did I think you had any money. Is Daddy British gonna pay? <laughs> Let's see if the money fits her big mouth. Oh no, the kid's got jokes. Be careful not to embarrass yourself, chum. Round and you go and fold on me? Pretty pathetic. <laughs> this is gonna be a long night. Father, you haven't taken a drink yet? Are you feeling well? Do you want me to get- I am fine. I can get Hoss up here if- No, there is no need. I just need a moment. I think we should consider canceling the event. No! <coughs> we will not cancel. I am fine. You shouldn't be pushing yourself like this. Go. Leave.
Thank you for the money, man. Se le agradece. What? How? This kid won like five plays. What is this shit? I told you not to go all in, man. Pero bueno. Better for me? Filthy cheater. Whatever. My dad will pay this off like it was nothing. An impressive feat. It appears you have had a great deal of luck. Not so easily impressed. Nah, this guy was way too easy. He was giving it all away with his face. I have far little experience with wager games to begin to comprehend this, but perhaps one day you may teach me? So, how much do I owe you, sir? By no means you owe me not. You may keep your winnings, my boy. It is your achievement. Welcome, friends of the White Collar. I would like to extend my hand today as your dear host. Now, as your host, I would like to bring a very special welcome to a most important individual standing in this room amongst you. No, it's not me. Governor of Lemoyne, William Alcott. Why, we are humbled by your presence here. I am pleased to make an appearance and attend such an elegant gathering. I am much obliged, Mr. McCray. And with that, I dub this event as officially started. Have a pleasant experience, everyone. Hey, who was that guy? Mr. McCray is a well-renowned businessman, chief executive officer of White Collar Industries, a monumental company in the success and wealth of Lemoyne. Oh, okay, okay, I get it. Let me guess. He's probably got more money than he knows how to spend it. Indeed, Mr. McCray's business endeavors have proven very profitable. As governor, it is my business to ensure the well-being of the money that circulates within Lemoyne. Governor Alcott, I apologize for my rash behavior earlier. I was not aware or informed of your attendance here. It is quite all right, but I do believe you owe my friend here your sympathies as well. Uh, yeah. Sorry, kid. Now, I must converse with our host in private. There are... Business matters that two of us must discuss. But wait, what shall I do now? Why, relax and relish this moment. I do believe the young lady over there has had an eye set on you for quite a while. Perhaps you should go and see why. You doing okay? How are you holding up? Hey, go. Huh? You just seemed out of it. I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Did I ever tell y'all about the time I fought off a grizzly with a fork in my two bare hands? Ah, oh, not again with this one. I haven't heard this. Yeah. Why don't you go and tell the story, Mac? I was out with my grandpappy one autumn evening, ending the session of our monthly hunting trip beneath the tall trees, when all of a sudden this big old giant bear towered before us. We've heard this a hundred times. But this is different. We ain't had our rifles on us, and a long day of trekking through the timbers and steep inclines can tire a man out. Me and Paps were so darn hungry we could have darn near eat a whole buffalo. A buffalo? No. No, I think you mean bison, yes? Buffalo, bison, same thing. Actually, buffalo are indigenous to South Asia and Africa. The bison, natively speaking, are what we see in North America. 
Realistically, Buffalo would be more of a fitting choice, as they are generally larger than a bison. Jesus Christ, I didn't realize we brought the walking encyclopedia with. Cut the kid some slack. He's a damn prodigy having to deal with us different folk. And I know he's got a lot more sense than you. Anyways, back to what I was saying. Me and my pap were worn out of energy. So we settled down to the middle of nowhere and ate some good old canned beans we found in our packs. My paps was always a conventional feller. He had books, bags, and spoons, and forks. A few bowls and a whole lot of food with him at all times. I could never understand why he'd want to go carrying that all around, but it was sure dandy when we needed it. Dumped those baby beans in a bowl and threw them on the fire. Bet you could smell that sweet, sweet scent from miles away. What? Who in the white mind would carry that much? It would be more of a waste of energy than good to carry all of that around. My paps would, of course. Me and my paps, we were always prepared. Until we met this giant, legendary nine-foot grizzly. That mammoth of a bear clawed my pops when he tried to go for his gun. I shot that thing four times with my rifle and it didn't even flinch. Oh, you should have gone for the head. Oh, I tried, Ace. I tried. Soon enough, that behemoth stood face to face with me, knocking me off my feet, throwing me ten feet across the air. I regained my posture and grabbed the first thing I saw as the monster stalked ever closer to me to finish the kill. What happened next? Come on. That grizzly tore into me as it leapt on top of me. I clutched that fork in and jammed the thing so darn hard into his right eye, I swear I could hear it jab straight into the brain. Wow. Did it really go that far? Milo, it's a fork. What do you think? God honest. Thing recoiled in pain, enough so that I could get my bearings. <laughs> bearings. Spared the jokes already. What happened? You kill it? Smash its skull in with a rock? Well, Jesse, I can tell you what. Fur mixed with a burn and fire in a spontaneous mix. I was able to escape from beneath the belly of the beast and gave it the foot. I kicked that thing right in the skull, landed a nine foot monster on its back and straight into a fire. Damn thing burned alive? <laughs> Even better. It's too bad that meat was charred to a crisp. After helping my paps up on his feet, that grizzly was engulfed in flame. And that was the tale of the time I killed the legendary El Bronto with just a fork in my two bare hands. Are you actually believing this, Jesse? Yeah. What's so hard to believe about it, huh? More believable than you trimming off that beard. I swear, half of you are too gullible, and the other, well, they've got cobwebs up in their heads. I'll catch all of you later. Hey! Was that directed at me? You son of a... Ah, whatever. Not even worth it. So, a bit too quiet over here. Decided you all needed a little bit more of me, and less of... Ah, uh, well, whatever. Y'all get the point. Hey, Wapiti, what you doing over here? Warming myself by the fire. No, I mean, uh, I mean with them. I enjoy the quiet. Besides, they are part of the gang now, right? The boss and him have some kind of history. Hmm, well, let me think. We shot up an entire town just to break them out. Then we raided some fat cat's oil field. And now we're out here sitting around a fire beneath the stars like one big happy family. I'd say they better be members after all that. Why'd you call him Wapiti? What's that got to do with anything? I had a, uh, had a bit of running with him. Adriel, you know this guy or something? I haven't seen you until now. What do you mean? A Novi, your leader, chief, whatever. He was like a brother to me. I had nowhere to go and he saved my life. When was this? Two years ago. My brother. He had just been shot. We ran. Zack was bleeding out and my head was posted in every town for miles. That was when Hanovi saved my life. And well, he tried to do the same for my brother. But there was nothing he could do. In the end, it was all my fault. He was shot. The marshal trailed me. I told Hanovi to run.
That was a long time ago. What happened after? After I left? Everyone was killed. How? They came back. Anovi and anyone who gave a fight were gunned down. After they killed Hanovi and the warriors, they came after us. I was sent away to protect those who could not fight. I wish I could have died an honorable death alongside Hanovi, protecting my home. Our people were still traveling to a sacred spot in the north. The law followed our steps. It was a massacre. They just... They just kept shooting. Everyone scattered into the forest, but there was no chance. They had hounds run us down and rip us to shreds. Fuck. Yeah... Guy definitely has a problem. I shouldn't have said anything. I better go after him. Pass. I believe the governor here wishes to speak with Mr. McRae. Indeed. I think the proposal I bring will be of great value to the White Collar Company. to the lion's den, no gun and holster, and without your hide protection. I cannot tell if that is a man's bravery or just pure ignorance. I very well know how this business operates, yet I stand here, favored in your audience. <laughs> ah, yes. As it seems to both no secrets, it would be dangerous if word were to spread. Secrets are like plague, not a big deal when contained, but troublesome for everyone if it breaks out. We don't want that, do we? A very astute correlation. Say, you could fare well within the writing and publication business. Writing is beneath me, but I do respect your sapless attempt to persuade me away from my current endeavors. I know of this issue you hold with a certain outlaw, so skip the small talk and tell me why you arranged this meeting. Is it not apparent? I request your aid in dealing with this certain outlaw. Him and his little band of miscreants are now providing me with quite the obstacle. I wish to have this troublesome disruption dealt with promptly and efficiently. This is why I come to you, the best in this business. Flattery will get you nowhere in this negotiation. Money will. Ha, <laughs> so you request a grant per se. I'm positive a healthy sum of funds could be arranged. See, it's rude to assume I'd be in need of your petty funds. Do I look like a man desperate for some spare cash? You give me a million dollars and it'll be gone the next day. No, I want something more long term. Very well. If I must make amends to ensure our mutual relationship. You're the governor, and a man of your position can do a lot for my business. Now, as you most likely can tell, I am sick. I am dying. I do not want to leave my sons with nothing like my father left me. And that's where you come in. What terms do you propose that are within my realm of possibility? Tax exemption would be a start. Lemoyne is a free state, and a lot of folks are unhappy with these new taxation games you and the state are coughing up. Sales tax, property tax. Hell, now you're coming up with a corporate tax. Very unfortunate for business. I understand your frustration. 
but know the importance of the United States federal tax laws. The very society we live in relies on the principle of taxation. Common order and government institutions will cease to function without adequate funding. Will the dusty vaults and reserves of our precious government really hurt if one small, meager corporation steps out? Either that or our little meeting here was for nothing. Say this accommodation is met. Will you cooperate with my agents and give your complete diligence to assist in this operation? As I said, we know each other's secrets. There are things we both know that no one else should. You have turned a blind eye to my side operations in the past. We would not be speaking here today if that were not true. You know that I do not give away my trust easily, and to even be considering this deal is a great risk for me and my business. Why, after all, should I dedicate my resources and risk my assets to play a child's game of cat and mouse for the government's interests? I suppose you have since heard of the devastating attack to your oil operation in the New Hanover Heartlands? I know of my oil refinery and that there were no reports of such an attack. A man who lies is one of the three things that upset me most, especially a man of your dignity. I do not deceive or slander you, Mr. McRae. I simply speak of the evidence which I have yet to explain. Do so enlighten me. The Valentine Sheriff reported to my department when locals were awoken to the sounds of rampant gunfire accompanied with the strong stench of death coming from your refinery. Upon learning of this affair, I had sent for one of my agents, Officer Rayburn, to examine the scene of this disturbance. Unfortunately, reports had shown that the majority of the personnel were found lifeless, riddled with bullets and that almost all of your property was either sabotaged or stolen. He's telling the truth, Father. I decided it would be best not to tell you on account of your health. You disrespect me, Sonny. We will speak about this later. I apologize for the misunderstanding on my part. It was rash of me to assume so quickly, and rash of my son to lie to me. Your reasons are justified, and I took no offense in the matter. I would like to continue with the subject of this discussion. Go ahead. You mentioned you had no stake in the matter, and therefore were unmotivated with your decision. Keep in mind that I had come to you first for assistance. I very well have many other subjects in mind for this task, but your cooperation was of best judgement. Colt McAllister, this certain outlaw I am having troubles with, was the spearhead of the attack on your oil refinery. Information relayed to me from Sergeant Rayburn along with the previous occurrences of illegal gang-based activity, indicated McAllister matched the M.O. When two witnesses, who were fortunate enough to escape this tragedy, were shown the bounty poster for McAllister, they both immediately testified on individual claims that he conspired with the attackers as if he were in lead of the operation. The individual I am hunting, the same man that I ask for your assistance with, is the man who ransacked and destroyed your operation in New Hanover. He has an ample amount of support and is likely leading his own rival operation in opposition to your own organization. I see. It is in both of our dearest interest to deal with this situation in a swift and orderly manner. Colton McAllister, as well as his amassing band of desperados, must be brought to justice, dead or alive. He now matters not. With a posse behind his back, this is as urgent as ever. If you keep true to your word on our negotiations, then I will see to it personally that McAllister's head will be delivered to you, severed or not.
stop and turn around before you regret it. I think it would be best if you come back to the camp. I think it would just be best if you fuck off. We can talk it out, please, just... Take the fucking hint. used to blame myself too and I believed it everything I did it just caused everyone else more pain my father he gave my mom and I a home he kept us alive and I owe my life for that he'd work his whole damn life away just provide for us he would always drink hoping to strike gold at the end of each bottle He'd overindulge himself till he couldn't think a thought for himself. He was consumed by his own rage. Mom will leave soon after she became his punching bag. You can probably guess who was the next target. My pops wasn't great either. I was clueless on what I did wrong. Every time he got mad, I just... It had to have been my fault, right? One night, Dad came home different than usual. I don't know if he drank too much or if maybe I had changed. It turned into a fight. All I could feel was this anger, this anger that had been building up inside of me for years. I asked myself, was this how he felt? This searing touch of an endless hatred? I nearly killed him, beating him down to a pulp. I was blinded by my own rage until I saw the sorrow in his eyes. I don't know whether it was some desperate trick or a cry for help, but... Only then did I realize the blood on my fists weren't my own. Should have just ended it right there. What would that have solved? I lived the rest of my life knowing that it gave into the fires inside. I hated him, but through the hatred I knew that if I would have ended his life right there, I would have become the very thing I had been fighting against my entire life. You were afraid. No, Colt, I wasn't. If I was afraid, I would have taken his life when I had the chance. I let him back up told him we needed to get this shit together or I wouldn't leave him just like Ma and then he'd spend the rest of his days alone. Sometimes it's stronger to live with the pain rather than constantly fighting to solve it. You won't find your salvation by running in circles, killing everyone who wrongs you. And then you're the one bleeding out on the floor, bullet in your back because you let them go. You let them have the upper hand. And now, you're the one who's dead. Colt, if you listen to anything I say, listen to this. You can be punished, beat, starved, tortured, and you'd still live. The moment you give up, that's when you die. I'm afraid. I know. But there is nothing I can do to change that. show you something. <sighs> the phantom shadow of where my right eye once sat. The remains of shattered bone and tissue. My eye is gone. Yeah, I can still feel every bit of it. I guess the eye patch wasn't for show. This scar tells a story, just like the scars of your past tell of your brother. The hollowed hole left empty, unable to ever be filled again. We all have scars, Colt. It's up to you how people see them. Will you fall in the legacy of your brother, burning down towns and destroying lives? Or will these scars help you fight, help you become more than your brother? What will people remember you for? After I confronted my father, they only got worse, but I now knew why he did what he did. He wasn't angry, he was afraid. I tried to help. I tried to make him see, but 
I was already too late. One late summer night in our Blackwater townhouse, he burst through the door reeking of alcohol and piss. I told him he was afraid and I knew it. He didn't need to hide the fear any longer. I just wanted to help, but he knew what he was doing. He knew that he had failed as not only a husband, but a father as well. And he used the same excuse you did, that it was already too late and anything he'd do would be in vain. That he was too far gone. We fought different wars. I fought to save him and he fought to forget. Eventually he grabbed onto me and pushed me. I lost my balance and fell straight into the jagged edge of the table our family once ate at. That's how I lost my eye. Not through some heroic story of justice and outlaws, but from having the bone behind my eye shattered by my own father. I don't know what you want me to say. Why are you telling me this? I don't want you to say anything. I want you to understand that you're turning into a man driven by hatred. But soon, you'll be too far gone and do something you'll never turn around from. It's not too late, Colt. Oh, and what am I going to do? Am I just going to snap one day and shoot you in the back? I don't know. I am a monster. That's what you're trying to say, right? Cole, I don't think you're a monster. I think you're scared that you're going to turn into one. Then I'm going to end up like him and die alone? Huh? <laughs> I could care less if you left me right now. I'm better off alone. Cole, I killed my father. What? He became the monster I warned him of. He tried to kill me. So... I even the odds, took the glass bottle that he was drinking from him, stabbed him in the same eye that he took from me. So your whole story about being strong was a bunch of bullshit then. Was it? I tried to help him just like you tried to help save your brother. In the end, you had to kill him just like I did. We all make mistakes, Cole. None of us are perfect. What makes the difference is that we learn from them, that we become better from them. It's not your fault that your brother died. And maybe you couldn't protect him. But those people out there, they're counting on you. Maybe you can start by protecting them. What makes us better is that we try better. So, just because you couldn't protect your brother, just because I couldn't protect my father, doesn't mean we can't protect the people out there who need us. What protector am I when everywhere I look there's a poster with my name on it? Wanted. Dead or alive. Bullshit. All they wanted was my head on a pike. That's why we stick together, Colt. Because at the end of the day, it's all we have. Every one of us, we all know that our lives are never coming back. Not the ones we used to live. I killed my own father. Brom was imprisoned and Scarlet helped him out. Carter was a bruiser. No bullet's going to take him down. And then there's Diego. Well, not much of a laugh there before you showed up. Better or worse, Colt, we are where we are now because of you. So where we end up, that's on you, whether you like it or not. Carter, how's he doing? Why don't you ask him yourself? He's resting up now.
More wine, sir? Huh? Would you like another glass? Uh, you know what? Screw the wine. Give me a damn whiskey or a fucking beer. Make it strong. Can't believe I'm drinking wine for this guy. Done with the mannerisms. You only have once. Here you are, sir. The fuck is this? Vintage brandy, sir, of French imports. Do I look like a Frenchie to you? Are you kidding me? Brandy? Don't y'all have some fucking whiskey or something other than this rich man's piss? This is quite the commotion you're staring up. Please do be respectful here. Yeah, yeah. Add your little taco with the head honcho upstairs. Absolutely invigorating. The pleasantries and banter were quite amusing to say the least. Ultimately, we had both agreed on terms and came to an equitable compromise. Yeah, uh, yeah. I understood like half that crap, but I'm taking it as we did what we came here to do. Correct. And now, we must find the lieutenant as well as our esteemed guest. Didn't even get a proper drink. Disappointing. Looks like Van Winkle here decided to take a nap on a job, huh? Mr. O'Neill, I gather you shall continue and find the boy while I have a word with my lieutenant. Oh, well, of course. I shall do your bidding. Good if I'd like it. I could play that lieutenant's job any day. I'm here doing the real work. Listen here, you little cheat. You think you can cheat the table like that and get away with it? me, pendejo! Teach this punk a lesson. You'll regret ever stepping foot on my boat. You're a dead man. Drop it. It's not what it looks like. Shoot him. I don't answer to you, Michael. He had trouble on my boat, and I find two low lives, and my son held a gunpoint. Explain. See? Quiet! Courtesy of our guests, they will speak first. You want the full story? Or a quick recap of your son's arrogance? You dare insult my name? All I'm saying is, I find your son and his dead friend there, attacking my friend, about to kill him in fact. So I do what any reasonable man does. Devin, how did he bring a weapon aboard? I searched him. His gear was properly secured. Let's just say I know a thing or two. Not gonna walk into danger with my pants down. No offense. Send for the governor. You will have to answer for his thralls incompetence. Now, Michael, I believe you have some explaining to do. This kid is obviously a cheat. You know what we do to those who cheat us? We tie them to the ocean floor. I see. Come here, son. Told you he was a problem. And then you made me apologize. Disobey me again, insult my guests, and continue being an arrogant pig, and I will chop your goddamn balls off, boy. Don't deserve to bring children under my name when you dishonor it every chance you get. I've been summoned in word of a matter regarding my entourage. What appears to be the predicament here? Take a look for yourself. Oh dear. Now, a murder on my boat is not to be taken lightly. Therefore, I'm sure you can understand what I must do. Now, I 
am certain we can resolve this state of affairs in a collective manner. How dare you! David, have them escorted to the lower portside deck. You heard the man. You can't be here, right? Do something. I am afraid the situation occurring here is far out of my control. Ah, fuck. Fantastic. So, when are we going to talk about this? Scarlet, stop the wagon. I said stop the damn wagon, Scarlet! We need to talk about what happened. Sure, let's talk about how you ran off when I needed you the most. You have no clue what the past two years have been like for me. I sure know you're not the same person I first met, the person who I looked up to. You were a keen-eyed businessman who weighed each risk and now... Now you're just some senile old man lost in some delusion where everyone in this world is innocent. Damn it, Bram. I'm trying my best here to protect us. How long until you throw me out? Like you betrayed Cold and Zack. How long until I'm no longer worth the risk and you throw me to the hounds like you did with Diego? I would never. Maybe it would be best if you just get rid of me now. Go, take that $600 that the suit gave you and scurry away on your boat. Goodbye, Scarlet. Bram, come back here. Near a tree, down by the river, there's a hole in the ground. It may bear my body, call my name. I know that I am forever bound. Bound to a life of sorrow, in pain I will slowly drown, for this is my fate, the king of death, I shall wear the crown. Bram, there you are. Why did you follow me? I'm no longer the man I was, I'm getting old, losing my way, soon. I'll just be dead weight. Just here. Slow you down. Don't say that. But it's true. Like you said, I I cower when you need me most. They broke me in that prison skull. They broke me. You're not thinking straight. Please come back with me to the wagon. We can rest somewhere nearby, eat something warm. You should move on. I've told you all I could. You shan't need me any longer. Bram. You are like a father to me. Everything I did, I did to protect you. 
They were going to hang you or beat you to a pulp if I didn't tell them about Colton Zack. I am destined to rot. Leave me be, and you shall see. Stop speaking in your depressing poems and listen to me. You don't think I hate myself? Bram, you taught me to trust, but all I can do is fear. You put your trust in someone and they will stab you in the back. And to trust a man who wears a black shroud, he will do the same. If there is a chance to save us, to protect you, Bram, I will take it. Please, Bram, we can have a chance where we don't have to run anymore. I don't care where we go, the Netherlands, France, Tahiti, I don't care. Just please give us a chance to live. My last lesson to you. I beg you to heed my words. You may always walk the endless roads in search of something, but sometimes all the heart wants is the sweet embrace of nothing. I will not leave this spot until you... Someone's watching us. Whoever you are, show your face. I know you're out there. Whoa there. Can a man go berry picking in God's land? Real slow now. You make one wrong move and I won't think twice about blowing your face off. Well now, there's no need to make a big deal. If you let me, I'd like to just forget about this whole ordeal and walk the other way. Were you listening to us? Yes or no? Were you listening to us? N no, uh, I was just berry picking here. Nothing else. If you think I'd fall for that, then you'd best shoot yourself and save me the trouble. No berry picker wears two guns on his back and ammo around his chest. Are you crazy, ma'am? I'm just trying to stay safe is all. Can never be too sure. Bram, let's go. Bram! You move another inch and I'll cripple your ass for the rest of your miserable life. Calm down, you crazy witch. What did you just call me? Oh, I know you heard me. Couldn't hear you. Maybe speak up. Come on, Bram. We need to go. Bram, I swear to God if you don't get your ass up. Bram, move!
You got lucky. But it seems all your luck just ran out. <laughs> Who gets the last laugh now? I do. Who are you? Doesn't matter. Older. Almost. Now! Get him! Come on, boys! Let's drop this son of a bitch! Uh, I think that's all of them. Are you crazy? You could have killed us with that. Well... I didn't. Wait. Who are you? That's classified. You're gonna come saving us like that and not even tell me a name? His problem? Well, that's classified too. Well, I'm assuming that wagon on the road is yours. Sorry ma'am, but it's been ransacked. Good luck though. Hold on. Where do you live? <laughs> I don't think we're that close. No. Where's your town or village or whatever? We're gonna need a place to stay. A motel or something. Hmm. Could it be the now recent lack of provisions or your friend's lack of sense? Well, the little food packed in the wagon is gone and the old man is fine, but yeah, we're just a bit tired from the road. The nearest town is in that direction. I'd be wary though. The bandits dead on the ground here don't have your stuff. So, I'd bet the rest of the outfit is on the way. And won't exactly be too happy seeing you killed off their buddies. Come on, Bram. You're gonna get us both killed. We have to move. No. No, I don't think I will. No? No. So help me. If I have to tie you up and carry you there, then I will. He's lost it. I'd cut the dead weight if I was you. Well, good thing it's none of your business then. You can call me Thorn. I'll be hitching a ride in the back of your wagon. Decided that I need to head into Van Horn for a bit of business. You ready? I never said yes. Wasn't asking. Let's go. You got any rope on you? I'd say it's nice to meet you, but... So tell me, how'd you show up in the nick of time, out of nowhere, in the middle of nowhere? The type of people back there, let's just say I have some unfinished business, and leave it at that. Not suspicious at all. Hey, once we get to Van Horn, you won't have to worry about it. Won't ever see me again. Just saying, it would be nice to know if I can trust you. The fact that you and the old man would both be dead by now, I'd say that saving you was enough. People can be deceiving. Yes, 
Yes, they can. Doc, you gonna keep me locked up in this tent all night? Come on, I'm not even tired. Where's my hat? Hey, Doc, where's my stuff? It should be back in the tent. No, 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 no. My, uh, my hat, specifically. Your hat? Didn't even have a hat on you when your friend Donovan brought you in. Well, damn. Ugh, don't tell me I lost a bag at Strawberry. Hey, Carter. How are you feeling? What do you mean? It was just a bullet in the shoulder. Can't die from that. Not that I know of. Eh, you should still take it easy. Good to see I didn't lose you, at least. I'm not leaving anytime soon. So, what are we doing all the way out here in the Heartlands? Is there a plan out here in these grasslands? Well, originally we were enacting revenge on a bunch of heartless fiends. It turns out we were the ones heartless all along. Sounds complicated. Oh well, what can he do? Should've seen it coming, I. Well, 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 gentlemen. What are we talking about here? None of your damn business. Oh, what's that? Y'all hear something? He told you to fuck off. Oh, now what? Daddy has to speak for you? I'm assuming you already met this fucking clown here. Clown? More like the whole damn circus. Well, come on, you wanna say it again, big guy? Sure. You're a big joke. Call yourself a gunslinger. <laughs> Funny. You couldn't hit a cow if it were right in front of you. Oh, I'm sorry. You'd probably enjoy hitting your mother. You know I could shoot you between your dumb looking eyes right now. You could try. I'm right here, ain't I? What, you too afraid to test me? In this little game we're playing, you know you'd lose. I know you're not worth the time. Can the two of you go shoot each other somewhere else? I'm trying to read over here. Why don't you get your beauty sleep? You seem a bit slow today. This isn't over. Damn worthless drunk. <laughs> you really gonna take that, huh? You expect to come from him? Tough love is what you call it. Tough love? Well, whatever. Call it what you want these days. I know I'm an asshole, but it doesn't compare to these assholes. Just a bunch of nutcases. Yeah, well, you could say that again. Could've shot him. Didn't. This would've proved his point. Putting him down might be the best option here. For his own sake, of course. He wants to be something. He wants to be known. He's a fake trying so hard to be someone he's not. To be shot by me, that'd be the best day of his life. Sometimes it's stronger to live with the pain. Good to see you actually listened.
So anyway, back in that backwater dump, after I was, you know, um, shot, what happened? Well, if it wasn't Cole, you'd be dead or locked away somewhere. You definitely got him to thank. As I carried your fat ass out of there, Colt covered our backs. Now I know you just didn't insult the strapping frame of mine. Robust as it is, these hefty muscles weigh a lot, you know. Well, anyways, I owe you guys now, and as you know, I always pay off my debts. Yeah, you can add it on to the tab. Hey, old boss man wants to have a word with you all. Suggest you not go letting him wait. Let's not test his patience. Off to see the boss's boss then, huh? Well, well. Jesse ain't too happy with you. Told me some nasty things. He had it coming. You should know. It's a dangerous thing to double cross me and my crew. Someone could get hurt. Ah, I was only joking with you. Jesse is annoying at most. I would have done the same thing if I was walking in your shoes. What? You heard me. You need to know when to drop your damn act and toughen up. We don't need any more pretenders. We need real men. I don't see you living up to it. Uh, whatever. This just ain't fair anymore. You know it, and I know it. Glad you finally decided to come around and join us. You wanted to see me. What, not allowed to talk with my grandson now? This ain't a business where you make small talk. It's one where you get shit done. Jeez, how big a stick went up your arse? I think I understand now. The story. The deaths on your hands. All a big lie. You don't understand a damn thing. I'd suggest you think long and hard about those next few words coming out of that mouth. Buddy, come on. Can we tone it down a notch? I wonder if you really meant what you said about the men you lost. Who's to say it wasn't some tall tale? And that you even care about any one of your men here. <laughs> Do you care about yours? Strolling in here, throwing your words around, calling me a liar. <laughs> Look at the numbers here, Colt. You put your own on the death sentence? Three against what? How many are we? Don't you ever come into my camp and accuse me of being unfaithful. I care about my family here. Can you say the same? I left your drunk of a father because he want to make gone. I abandoned my family to protect them. And guess what, Colt? I stayed away. I played my part, Colt. Your father is dead. Not by my hands, no. The blood is on your hands. The fuck is that supposed to mean? You haven't heard, so I'll put it lightly here. His face? was blown off by a 12 gauge. The entire head, gone, turned into red mist. After finding out my grandson was locked up in some backwater cell, I decided to send Mac here to check in on a ranch. Wanted to be sure you were in fact my grandson and not some snitch employed by our dear government. I think you lie. 
Do I cope? Do I? Does the name of Alcop ring any bells of yours? See, I have this burning question on why Mac here tells me that the great governor was caught speaking with my son on the day that he was shot. Any ideas? My thoughts are you paid your old man a visit and that you ain't too good at hiding your tracks. Zack is dead. It was only right to tell Pa. And now he too is dead. See, your actions have consequences. What you believe to be the right thing may not be the best thing for everyone else. You are an outlaw now. There's no way back. So now you either learn to survive or you die. It really is a thing, though. People expect perfection from you when they themselves aren't a shining example of perfect. See, there are those in this camp with this false belief that I'm starting to waver, that I'm growing weak. Well. I won't mistake loyalty for family. I know who my family is. Mac was loyal, but he weren't family. What the fuck was that? Anyone? Huh? Just a normal day? Talk about nutcases, huh? He killed his own man.